Good morning, Winfrey fam. Happy uh, Monday morning. Um, I get the privilege and honor of doing a recap of Dr. B's message yesterday. So we're still going through the parables of Jesus. Um, and each parable has a different underlining story, hidden message, that sort of thing. Um, and so the parable that we're talking about actually has two different kind of stories running all at once, but we're going to focus on the latter part of it. And that can be found in Luke 19, 11 through 27. And it's the parable of the 10 minas. And minas is a coin that was given to um, servants to go do something with while the owner, the master was gone. And so I'm not going to read the scripture this morning, but um, I encourage you all to check out the message from yesterday and um, we'll talk more about that. Um, so minas are of value, right? And um, 10 minas was somewhere between six months and nine months worth of wages. And what popped into my head with this whole thing was um, everyone loves Facebook Marketplace, right? And I've had these speakers that I've had for a really long time. Being in youth ministry and stuff, you accumulate things and, you know, whole PA system. It's a Mackie. It's a nice set. I've had it in storage for a couple of years now just because I haven't really had to use it at Winfrey. So finally, I posted it on Marketplace and got a hit instantly. And... Um, uh, went and met the guy and paid cash and all of a sudden I have a little more money to put towards a project car or an old truck or something like that. Um, but these speakers were one of the more like numerical values of items that I own and um, it just got me thinking about the value and stuff like that. And so Dr. B's question yesterday was what is your greatest gift, um, meaning like, you know, in your life. And he said, you know, it's not your, um, physical abilities with sports and artistic and things like that. And he said, your greatest gift from God is him and it's Jesus in your life. And that's the most valuable gift that you have. And, uh, it really got me thinking cause yeah, I have a little extra money in my bank account right now after, you know, giving, after selling those speakers but nothing changed, right? Um, other than I have a little bit more money and now I'm figuring out what to do with that money. Um, but when Jesus comes into our hearts, man, that's, that's when things change. And that's what it's talking about is once you have Jesus in your heart, what are you going to do with that? That love should overflow out of us. And so that was the question is, what do we do with this gift that Jesus has so graciously given us? And so the different servants um, reacted in different ways to the master. Some reacted with trust and grace and tried to multiply what was given to them. And then there was this other servant who acted out of fear. Um, and, and in doing so, he didn't produce anything of any extra value for the master. He literally just took and buried his money. He didn't put it into a bank account to gather interest or anything like that. And, and so there's two different types of Christians for that matter. Those that have trust and grace in our heavenly father for what he's done for us and want to share it with others. And those that sometimes feel like we live out of fear of God, um, that God's going to be angry with us if we do something wrong or strike us down with lightning or just this fear of not sharing um, what God has done in our lives with other people, therefore producing no extra fruit. You see what I'm saying? It's kind of like the matchsticks. Um, the, you see them all lined up in a row, but you pull one out and then it just stops. And so that's like those people with fear. They have Jesus in their hearts, but that it doesn't go any further than that. They're not willing to share what God is doing in their lives. And so I want to conclude with this. If someone asks for trust from God, does God automatically give them trust? Or does, he, does it mean that God will allow opportunities for them to trust God? And that's really what it breaks down to. God just doesn't magically say, poof, you have trust now. God allows us to have opportunities 
for us to trust God. But the key word there is we have to be obedient to God's calling in our lives and what God has placed us in. He's placed us in all different circles within our families and community and our work and co-workers and sports teams and um, parents and things like that. And, and so our job is to be obedient to that and look for opportunities to plant that seed so that other people can come to know the loving, gracious God that we do. I pray that you all look for opportunities to do that this upcoming week, as I will the same. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you for the parable. I thank you for Dr. B's message yesterday. I thank you for uh, the analogies used and the opportunities that we have as Christians to, um, to look for others that are, are hurting and broken and need Jesus in their hearts. And, and lives can change because of that. And so we are excited for what this week holds, for what this month holds, for what the, the future holds, um, allowing us to be a part. You, you don't need to use us, but you allow us to be used to help with our, with our trust and with our faith um, and to show what an amazing and gracious and loving God you are. And so be with us as we look for those opportunities this week to plant seeds and to have more people come to know you as a loving, gracious God. We pray all these things in your precious name. Amen. All right, y'all, look for those opportunities this week. And uh, don't be surprised when uh, opportunities show up because God's waiting. Take care.